Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about ST maps inside of Blender and how to best utilize them for compositing inside of visual effects. Real quickly, I just want to say a massive shout out to all of my Patreon members. Also, we now have a community Discord, and so if you're interested in that, I'll have a link down below where you can get started. Uh, I actually have a submission form right now going on to where I'm going to rate your visual effects in a later video. And so if you're interested in that, just follow the instructions down below to go ahead and submit. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in the video. Now, I'm super excited about today's video just because we're going to be talking about a non-destructive way of working with lens distortion inside of Blender. Now, if you are familiar with Blender camera tracking, you know that it automatically calculates the uh, optical center and radial distortion. If you actually want to see some of those, uh, you do want to make sure those are checked when you're doing the camera tracking process. I've already done all the camera tracking. I have plenty of camera tracking tutorials of my method of camera tracking. But you can see over here in the lens workflow, we actually have some numbers for our optical center and uh, lens distortion. So that's going to be really good for us to actually calculate that in. What we would have had to do in the past, uh, it's a little bit of a destructive workflow, in my opinion. Uh, you might be familiar if you go ahead and set up the tracking scene. So once you uh, click this button, it goes ahead and sets up all of these nodes in the compositing section. And so it might be a little bit confusing for you beginners out there of what these are actually doing. And so to walk it through real quick, uh, basically we have our footage and and uh, what Blender tries to do is it tries to undistort that footage. And so you can see, uh, basically, this is the lens distortion. You can see this black border around. That's basically the lens distortion that's calculating, again, using those numbers. And what we would have had to do in, a, in the past uh, is go ahead and have to copy and paste this node right here into our CG, because we're going to be doing our CG into another compositing program. That's how us visual effects artists like to work. But uh, we would have had to change this from undistort to distort. And as you can see, it basically just uh, bakes in some of that distortion into the uh, effects. So now if I come to my alpha over, we'll turn off the undistortion because we don't want to affect our footage, right? Our footage, we want to remain uh, the same. But I can see if I turn that on and off, it's basically just adding that uh, lens distortion into our CG. And so that's how we would have had to work. Uh, we basically would have had to plug this out to uh, the composite node and render this out. Again, this is very uh, destructive. We don't really want a destructive workflow since I'm not going to be doing my compositing in Blender. We want a way to not apply our distortion yet and apply it into the compositing program of your choice. And so I just want to say a massive shout out to Sean Kennedy. I'll have their video down below. They do a much better job at explaining everything that I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, but we are going to be using one of their Blender scripts. So just go to the uh, kind of comment section or sorry, the description below. And then you can go ahead and open that up here uh, again. Huge thank you to this. Uh, this is a amazing tool that honestly should be default inside of Blender, in my opinion. Anyways, go ahead and download that. Again, link is down below for his video. Uh, so go ahead and download that link. You should have a file like this. All you need to do is just go ahead and extract it to whatever folder that you're going to be using. And so you should have a file that kind of looks like this. Uh, the main ones that we really care about is this base image right here and then this uh, node setup right here. Uh, and so let's go ahead and go inside of Blender. Now, again, I've done the camera tracking. We are actually uh, in the stage, you know, now that I would be comfortable exporting out my CGI. And so what we need to do is I'm going to go ahead and append uh, his Blender project into the scene. We're going to go to file and we need to append this into the scene. Okay, so once we have his file open, let's click on this uh, Blender file. Let's go over to Node Tree, and then we have this ST export. We're going to append that into the scene. And now if we just type that in ST map export, we're going to uh, drag and drop that inside of this. Uh, and then we also need a image file. So I'm going to open up a image uh, folder, and we're going to open that up. And we need to locate that uh, EXR image that he has into the blend file. Okay, so again, we're looking for the base EXR, not any of the others. So just the base here. Let's open that up. Uh, and this is for uh, 1080p videos. And so as you can see, I'm in 1080p. If you are going to be uh, rendering in another format, such as 4K or anything like this, you will need to actually render out your own ST map base uh, that is going to be in that resolution. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to go ahead and plug the image into the ST map over there. Uh, this is where if you are working in another format, you want to go ahead and put the uh, width and height in here. Uh, and then we'll mess around with this overscan a little bit later here. Uh, the only other thing that we have to do is if you tab into the group, we can come and select these. Uh, we want to go ahead and set the undistortion and distortion things over here to our actual thing. And so as you can see, I can click inside here and this is the default one that it comes with. Uh, but you just want to click on the EXR or image sequence or whatever you're using for your 
your own footage. So that's iPhone for me. And you just want to do those for both of these. So iPhone on both of those. And that's pretty much all you have to do in here. You can see all the math that's going into this. So amazing work there, Sean. Uh, but we can come out of here. And now we have two uh, ST maps. And so if you don't know what an ST map is, it basically is a uh, kind of map like any other map uh, inside of, uh, you know, visual effects or 3D. Uh, basically, it's a, a set of information that is going to tell the compositing software where to actually distort the footage. And so as you can see, this is the undistort one. And then this is the distort one. And so undistort store it might be uh, good if you want this exact effect uh, to actually apply to the your footage so as you can see if i kind of switch between the two it is literally the exact same copy and so that kind of explains that the one we really care about uh for today's tutorial is going to be this distort st map Okay, so now that we have this, we do have to go ahead and talk about this over scan percent. Uh, basically, what is going to happen is that we're going to distort our actual CG. And so since we want our final render right to be 1080p, uh, what we actually need to do is render out a little bit uh, larger of a file. And so that's going to be a larger X and Y uh, resolution, just because when we do distort it, we don't want any quality to be lost. And so the way that I like to do it is I like to come to this undistort ST map. We can see that it is distorting in our our edge uh, and we all all we want to do is just uh, make it so that our uh, resolution uh, percent up here is greater than 100 and so uh, whatever number that is for you you have to do some testing around all you're looking for uh, I did some testing around by the way and for my scene it's 105 uh, if you do some testing around basically what you want to do up here is you want to kind of look to see if this has changed what we also have to do is for our over scan percent we're over scanning this by five percent and so basically just take your number and uh, minus it by a hundred and so we're going to put in five percent there and now you can see we have a greater border uh the you don't want too great of a border because again what this is doing is it's basically going to multiply uh these numbers by 105 percent and so the less that uh we actually increase that by the uh, less amount of time it's going to take to render and so that's very important you don't want to go too much but you also don't want to go too little uh you basically just want a nice little border around here so as you can see we're having a, a pretty nice border it's not going to affect our quality too much uh, and so that is kind of how I determine that. It really depends on how heavy of a distortion you are uh, using. I used an iPhone for this, so you can see we're having some uh, pretty uh, big distortion, but not too big compared if you're using like a fisheye lens or anything like that. So again, 105, uh, you just want to take that same percentage and uh, plug it in right here. Uh, and now we're ready to render this out. We can go ahead and uh, I like using a file output node uh, for this stuff just because we're going to render one frame and it's super easy to render one frame. Uh, we can go ahead and plug this into the image right here. We're going to go ahead and select a new file path. So wherever you want to save that, uh, we want to be saving this in the highest quality that we can. So I'm going to go EXR. Uh, we're going to do RGBA float full. Uh, and then zip is lossless and so that's totally fine since we're rendering it as one image uh, this is where you can maybe uh, plug in uh, something like uh, st map or something like that whatever you want to call it uh, and then once you have that ready we can go ahead and render image again the nice thing that i like about actually doing a file output node compared to just plugging it into the composite node is that when we do do render image it'll actually output that to the folder versus composite only renders if you do render animation so that's just why i like doing it like that Anyways, once that renders, you should have a EXR file like this. Uh, we can go ahead and double check this inside of the program. I'm going to drag and drop it inside of Nuke, uh, but of course, use whatever compositing program that you're going to be using. And now you don't have to use Nuke for this tutorial. This is just uh, the pro program that I like using the best, but it does work for most of the mainline uh, kind of compositing software, inc including Fusion, um, After Effects, all that stuff. It's kind of the same principles. Uh, so as you can see here, we have everything is looking good. You can see that uh, we have it full frame and it is that kind kind of weird resolution. This is that 105 number uh, that we put in. So basically it's just 1080p. It's one 105% uh, greater than 1080p. And so that is that number. Uh, we'll get around how to uh, kind of fix this a little bit later into the compositing process. Anyways, back inside of Blender, we are ready to render out our CGI. Uh, now, quick thing, we don't want to change this 105 number. Whenever uh, we do this, you want to make sure that you get this number right the first time because it's really hard to kind of change it after the fact, if you will. So you want to make sure that you, uh, again, do that testing, make sure there is a good border around here that's not going to give us too much uh, pixel compression or anything like that. Uh, so again, 105 was perfectly fine for uh, getting this border right here. So we're going to render out the CGI with that same thing. So again, we're not trying to bake in this 
this uh, the distortion into our CG. We want our CG undistorted as much as possible. Uh, so actually, I don't need these uh, kind of nodes up here anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and M to mute some of these. All we care about is just uh, the uh, render layers node right here because we're going to be rendering out our CGI. I already have a file uh, output kind of set up. I'm not really uh, doing too much CGI in this actual thing. You can just see I have some red squares on the ground for demonstration purposes. But all I'm doing is just rendering it as a PNG uh, with alpha channel and then uh, just setting it to a CG pass. Uh, so again, once you have this set up, whatever CG you're using, you just want to go ahead and render that animation. Uh, and then we can finally hop into compositing. Okay, so we are in compositing. Again, I'm going to be using Nuke for this tutorial, but all of the principles still apply to your own software. So you might uh, want to go ahead and look up how to do SDM, SD maps in your compositing software. So let's go ahead. I'm going to uh, read in some of our files. So first of all, we have our EXR sequence. So here is that same EXR sequence that we had before. Let's render in our footage uh, for the background. Okay, so here's my EXR sequence. Now, uh, for me personally, I'm going to have to go uh, and set this to be at frame one, but you shouldn't have to do that. Uh, also, we need to go ahead and set up some project settings before I forget. So let's hit S over here, and then I can set the frame range to the frame range of my CGI since I'm not rendering everything. Uh, I think we are at 30 FPS, and then we are rendering it at 1080p. Uh, so we're going to put that. Uh, next, let's uh, read in our CG pass. Okay, so here's my CG pass. We're going to open that up. Uh, and so now let's start compositing. Basically, what we would do in, uh, before is we would go ahead and merge these two things together. Uh, let's go ahead and pre-multiply our CG. This is kind of basic, very uh, basic comp uh, compositing principles. So we basically have this. Uh, now, I do have to reformat my... Uh, footage because this footage was in 4k and also uh, remember our CG is that same number as our EXR sequence so we can see they're the same number there and we do need to reformat that as well so we're going to reformat uh, the reformat node we'll just go ahead and format it to whatever we say and we're just saying 1080p uh, so now this should look exactly like you uh, see inside of Blender minus the lens distortion. And so this is where that ST map comes in. This is where we actually have to add in the lens distortion. And the reason I like work, uh, using this method so much is because it is so non-destructive. Like, honestly, uh, it is such a amazing uh, kind of add-on inside of Blender to be able to do this inside of compositing before, again, we would have had to do that inside of Blender. And it would create so many headaches, right? Say if uh, for some reason the distortion is looking a little weird or anything like that we would actually have to go all the way back into our blender blender file uh, redo all of the kind of distortion nodes inside of that and then have to export out everything again inside of cg and that'd be another like 10 plus hour render uh, for some projects and stuff like that so now if that ever happens we can just go back and just uh, render out this exr sequence or this exr image right here so now that we have this let's go ahead and uh, apply this st map so uh, inside of nuke we're going to hit tab Go to ST and just type in ST map. It's this first one right here. We're going to plug it into our uh, CG stream right there. And then I'm going to put the ST map to our EXR sequence. You can see that it's not really doing anything as if I kind of on and off it. And that's actually because for some reason uh, the UV channels are set to none by default. We want to go ahead and change this down to RGBA. And so now you can see our ST map is actually working now. You can see that it's actually applying the lens distortion. I can quickly just demonstrate what we're actually doing. If I come back inside of Blender, if you remember our lens distortion uh, kind of workflow before, if I turn this uh, undistortion back on, again, this is doing the footage in. So this is what we don't want, but it gives us an idea of where these uh, markers should be. And so if I zoom in right here on the very side, you can see this uh, kind of thing on frame one is supposed to be touching the little leg right here. And so if I go back into Nuke, uh, you can see that if I uh, have it off, so we'll turn it off for now, uh, you can see it's not touching, right? And so that is the distortion not applied and so now if we apply it, it is exactly where it should be inside of blender uh, and furthermore we can go ahead and play this and why it's so important I guess I should also showcase that so we can play I'll, I'll play it with it off we can especially see on the sides if I kind of zoom in here it looks like all of these things are kind of floating in midair just because uh, Liz distortion uh, around the edges is where you can mostly tell but yeah all this uh, all these markers should be uh, kind of um, on the ground plane especially this one you can see by that a uh, little leaf, you can see it kind of starts attached to the leaf. And then by the end of it, it kind of uh, trails off and everything. Uh, now with the lens distortion applied, we should be able to see if we kind of zoom in here, everything sticks a lot better. It might be a little bit hard to tell, but trust me, this is much more match. And if I kind of 
uh, full screen everything you can see that all of my kind of dots and everything are sticking onto the floor and so this is a, a very very important aspect of visual effects to get right for camera tracking and in the past again blender has been notorious for not being great at that that's why in some of my old courses and stuff i just purely didn't deal with it just because it was such a nightmare to have to kind of teach beginners how to do but with this method i can honestly say that blender camera tracking is uh, pretty decent now uh in terms of lens workflow and all that stuff so so anyways i hope this video has been insightful of how to actually utilize blender camera tracking the best best way possible in order to not be destructive in our process again because we want to have all of the steps in the compositing process be as flexible as possible and so Anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far, I'd greatly appreciate liking and subscribing. Also, if you want to join our Discord and Patreon communities, we have those in the description below. But anyways, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.